Hello, BAME Farm fans. We're here in the Quonset hut, and we see the Terry 6 opening up a little bit. Yep, still gotta dig the rotors out, but we're back here in the barn, and unfortunately we don't have smell-o-vision. You, <laughs> I can still smell that clutch. It is still smelling burnt. Um, that bearing's a little dry, but this is a clutch setup we have from the first TR-70, uh, but first, I mean, it was well before, that was a long time ago, it was a cat diesel. So we're gonna pull this stuff apart, try to get something on video, and hopefully New Holland was smart enough that this clutch and that clutch are interchangeable. Now we took the ring off, and the ring you know, mounts to these holes around the big pulley here. Um, you know, it has the teeth in it that mesh with these teeth. And, uh, well, that ring fit around this clutch. And as far as Dad knew, that one was still functional. So let's get to busting knuckles. field we did take a few parts off like we took you know the big arm bracket and some bolts off uh, just to you know see what we could do see if we could pop it loose and well <laughs> we couldn't so we get to get it home we took the ring off and that separated the pulley from the clutch which is now off on the ground and uh, right now we're in the middle of pulling this whole piece off. I think because we heated it up so much, I want to put bearings in this pulley. I mean, if the bearings go, the bearings are going to go out going down the road. They're not going to go out while we're in the middle, while we're in the field. So let's we'll try to save ourselves from you know having any issues going down the road. We're this far, go a little bit farther, spend a couple hundred dollars, put new bearings in it. I mean, I did grease it really good before I came home just in case if the grease got cooked out of it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get back to pulling this off. Dad went to get some longer bolts to pull this whole piece off. I really need to work up top and work on taking the tension off so we can uh, take the belt loose. Now uh, we need some longer threaded bolts, but there's two holes in this back plate on the clutch to push this whole piece off. And we can Stand here for a second. Listen to those bearings. Now you may hear it could rub that belt a little bit. Doesn't sound bad, but just because I know how hot we got it, I figure we might as well replace those. And I'm hoping 
the bearing here back in the frame was far enough away that the heat had dissipated enough that it's not a problem because you can see where we had uh, some good smoldering there. I guess we got lucky it didn't catch on fire. Yeah, we got stopped in the action. I guess that didn't show taking this belt lo loose. There's a big adjusting rod up there and we just pull it up and it's being held thanks to the shock, which, well, <laughs> it's original. Don't know if it needs replaced or not. Um, it doesn't move quickly, which that's the whole point of a shock is to stop quick movement. Uh, but we need to go see what stopped action here for a quick second. I earned my shower wrestling down this random free range steer. Really trying hard to, I don't know, break his neck. It's okay, bud. It's okay. It's, ah, oh, you dummy. Stupid Angus. Crazier than a woman you meet at the bar. Pretty sure, yeah, you're a, you're a, you're a little steer. It's okay, cool your jets, buddy. You got plenty of hay to eat, bring out a bucket of water, but you had to run him down for, you know, at least a half mile out across the fields out front. He was out in the main road. It's okay, if you would just cool your jets and not be so idiotic. See, I'm good. I, I scratch your ears. Yeah, and we called to find your owner. Oh, well, if it's not Nick, it's in something else I'm interrupting. Well, we might have missed some of the action of pulling the back plate for the clutch off. Right there, there's a threaded hole and there's a threaded hole on the other side that we ran a couple bolts in to push it off the shaft. Um, well, we got it started and then we took the big gear puller and started pulling it off. Now, this is a rather precarious setup. I do not like it. But I've got the gear puller, now full tension on the big pulley here. We got this deep, we're gonna put bearings in here because who knows how hot it was and how much the grease melted. I'm pretty sure that it's coming off and I've just been turning it by hand and I think it's coming because if we look really close right in there, you can see where the grease has moved a little bit on that ring. Um, and this is all held on by the nut out here. And it you know, pulls into everything. I don't, th I hope we don't, I don't think we need bearings going through the wall of the machine. There's a bit more separation, but since the clutch is right here contributing so much heat and it was smoking and smoldering good, you can still smell it. I'm just slowly taking my time. I'm not, I don't have the impact or anything out here on it. That seems like a bad idea, just because <laughs> I didn't go out here because that was a good chance of breaking it. Hopefully these inner ribs are stronger. I really would like to be pulling. The best place would be if I could get it to reach back there, but I don't know if there's enough arch to these arms because there's a good thick spot to pull on up there. We're just slowly turning it by hand instead of pounding away at it with the uh, impact, which this is easier and I should be able to hear and feel if anything starts to go awry at any of the points. So we're just gonna keep turning slow, nice and slow. seal off. It doesn't look too bad in there. I don't think we've overheated anything. I'm trying to decide, I bet those bolts, I don't know, is that a reinforcing plate, but there's no yellow paint on those. Makes me wonder if those have been pulled off before. Um, dig through the dust and dirt. Of course, you're not gonna be able to tell. I don't feel any play there. That should have been okay. Never seen the back side of this before, how that guy works. Big bunch of grease. 
I don't know, it doesn't look too bad, but I'm this far, so I figured put a couple new bearings in it, and we should be fine. See, this is what when these bearings give out, the problem's gonna be going down the road because this shaft is stationary, say, when you're just traveling and not running the inside of the machine. Now, those bearings and that pulley don't matter when you're running the machine because the whole shaft is turning and these bearings are stationary, so I won't have issues in the field, it'll be going down the road. And that's when it's real bad to have issues. <laughs> Don't want to be stranded on the side of the road. And everybody sees all the problems as they pass and laugh. <laughs> going through a dealer and of course I think they were smart enough there we go pop that bearing and seal out they were smart enough to not go through the Italians they go you know say direct to the bearing manufacturer but that's the bearing it's all greasy I think it's a Timken 385 well, they definitely got their uh, um, silver stuff their anti seize in there and this is this is the seal. It's just a cast iron ring. I have one that's cleaned up. There's a lot of grease on it. Uh, but there's no... There's no rubber inside there. It, I guess it just relies on close tolerances and grease. And the fact that you keep on pumping grease into it. We gotta remember that this ring goes in the middle between all the bearings. <sighs> we'll set that there for good keeping, but... Uh, not much is gonna gonna happen there. Uh, it's not going back in. We got new ones. Um, I might as well punch the races out here. Remember, this spacer was on this side in the seal, so we'll uh, just kind of stick that there for safekeeping, so we remember how it goes back together. And we'll feel better about ourselves once we're done that we've got nice fresh bearings in here. It's nice to have peace of mind. This is kind of just a peace of mind fix, putting these bearings in. I think the ones on the shaft are okay. Might have said that once or twice. You know, I don't know what the fascination is with painting parts. Obviously, some paint is good. We like shiny new paint on our parts. But this is one of those seals. And I had to take the paint off there because this edge is going to be a, you know, a very tight tolerance fit and the paint will get in the way. Same thing with the inner seal surface. I'm trying to get the paint out now and hopefully I'll be able to get all the paint shavings out. It's like I've been playing with dandelions. I'm turning yellow. I mean, I'm all about no rust as much as the next guy. Um, but just put some oil on it and wrap it in plastic is that enough I mean, I probably got no chance at getting it out of the valleys in this thing but if I can get the uh, the ridges cleaned up where it may touch something hopefully that's okay I'm gonna have to take the air gun and blow all the paint dust out hopefully it's not leaded paint but well, we gotta come out here to the handy dandy freezer Oh, and we gotta find some frozen parts. There it is, on right on top of dinner. Our dinner some night. Froze our races, try to make them to go in a little easier into our big bully. Oh, here we go with the other side. Now they machined a slight lip, so this should sit down in here a little bit. Oh, that's a nice deep start so we can get this race in pretty far using it as say a block to tap it down in sure press would be nice there's a lot of things I a lot of tools I want a lot of all those nice things don't know where I'm gonna put it in the garage 
because if you've seen the garage, there's a lot of stuff in the garage. It's one of my uphill battles is keeping the mess cleaned up. Because every time we fix something, well, if I don't put the tools away, nobody's putting the tools away. Let's put it that way. Whether I fixed something or not. Now, we still have a ways to go before we get too deep with this one. I'm going to flip it over so that way we've got a wider shoulder to tap it out. Because now I can use... Now we can probably stack that other race. That is a lot to try to keep in line. It's really annoying as the handle hits right there. So that's always good for smacking a finger or two. Almost there, but just not quite. Oh, I might have to waste another rag or two and clean off this race just to have something to hammer on. How's the clutch discs going? Okay. So if we look at uh, what Dad's working on, that's the old clutch pack from one of the previous TR-70s that we've never seen on video because it was around a long, long time ago. It was an old cat that liked to break motor mounds. And we even put a whole new... Main shift in it. Yeah. And... That old one got sold to somebody who really had to have it for parts after the engine was sold. But we did swipe a few key parts before it left. Like the separator clutch. It sounds like I might be all the way down. Old engine's pumping coal. Stuff out of. We're lucky. Oh, oh, somebody had some forethought there. Good job, New Holland engineers, on that one. Because, yeah, we made it all, we're seated all the way down against that ring in the center. Well, that part's done. Time for the fun of packing the bearings. Ooh, it's almost too big for the cones. Almost, but not quite. We have a lot of grease in the middle, but it sure beats doing it by hand. One, two, three, four. Finally! Anybody count? That was like 30 pumps. And now it's through the bearing. Must not be big pumps coming out of this guy. I might as well grease the race up with this. So, for those of you out there who've got these combines to grease, that's just how much grease it takes to get anywhere. So you're gonna feel like you're gonna put half a tube in this first, in this pulley the first time we grease it. And voila, there's the other half of the tube right in the middle of the cones. Yep, that's all of our grease. Might as well take some of this out of the inside and we'll rub it on the rollers from this direction. Yeah, that took way longer than I thought it would. Of course, I've usually only done bearings half the size, so I don't have to fill up the center of the cone full of grease so much. I could probably use all that grease in my hands to pack the next one, but then I'm gonna get, well, we're not saving a whole lot of grease right now, are we, from getting dirty? Okay, we gotta go up to the garage and pick ourselves out a seal. 
Oh, back in the refrigerator we go. Let's see, pizza. And something they call a seal, but I've never experienced a seal without rubber or leather. Do you think cast iron transfers energy faster or better? Than? Uh, hardened steel. Ugh. As compared to the bearing races. Hmm. I think the bearing races are more heat. They transfer better. I mean, maybe there's more metal, but my fingers got colder carrying back the seal than it did the race. I don't know if this is quite the most kosher way to do it, but we're tapping gently enough. And feels like we have it in there just about flush, which as best as I can tell, it's probably far enough. What do you think? Or should I go in farther? Oh, I think you can go down to where it touches the outside of the race. Oh, you think so? Because we're not far from touching the bearing there. Alright. Uh, no, we've got plenty of surface. You don't want it holding you out when you put it together. Yeah, but we've got plenty of... <laughs> I think we've got plenty of... Ring there. Uh, yeah, but it runs on this ring. Yeah. And there's plenty of space okay. between the two, I think. Mm-hmm. Take some of that extra grease and grease that seal up. Well, we'll do that at the end because I gotta flip yeah, it and do another saying. bearing. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. This ring is supposed to sit in there. Mm -hmm. This will be real fun to line up. Oh, you need a lot of WD-40 or something. Yeah. Gotta clean it out, but it's still hard. That just come out. sits right in there. Okay, so quick little detour. We'll look at what Dad's doing, and we'll grab oh an old well a used disc to compare to the one we cooked to an uncooked one. And as far as we believe, these are fairly good discs. And there's some burnt schmutz. Now these ones have a nice, say smooth surface to them. I'm not quite sure what sort of mess of fibers and other synthetic materials have been put in here. Yeah, but they're, uh, they're kind of smooth surfaced. This is the one I toasted, and you can see it's cooked, like how black it is compared to this other one. And it's cooked like the glue or whatever out of it, and you can see, I don't know, the fibers or whatever's in it. I'm not too well versed in clutch disc material, um, but it's not, say, smoothish like that one. And we had to take the clutch pack from the old TR-70 apart because some of the holes like here in this bearing and in the back plate for the clutch assembly were different. It's time for the most exciting part of this, seeing if I can get the pulley back on. And there's so much to line up, because if we remember, there's that ring oh, in between the two bearings for some odd reason. Come on. This isn't too much of a pain to go together, and it's not starting out very well. It's not just sliding on. <sighs>
based on the uh, rust or lack thereof, I think I think that's close to where it was. Yeah, looks pretty close. Ish. Ish, Swedish fish. Something like that. We'll go with it. Maybe I can look through one of the holes down here. I guess that's about as shiny as it was. Yeehaw, we love shiny. I think that's a measurement thing. These tabs of metal. Yeah. And, uh, well, that's about the uh, same length as what the spring was compressed before. I know that belt's pretty solid. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. Got to run a lot of power through it. If you don't have the right size wrench, I'll just grab your local vice grip. <sighs> it doesn't matter if it's a hex head or rounded off or square. It won't matter anymore. Now the camera died. But we got all this stuff back on thanks to, and hopefully we saw some of this in that last clip. First and second gear, and first gear from the two plus two because they would fit over the shaft, but weren't so big that this washer would still catch it. And we just kind of push everything on a half inch at a time. And we uh, got our use out of that nut right there and just keep pushing things on. It wasn't too hard, just a little bit time consuming. I already, well, we, we just saw me tighten that. And come over here, we dug out the side as much as possible what was plugged um, and we got to turn a little bit by hand but we haven't made a full turn yet but hopefully we have it turned all the way back that when we hit it to go forward it'll all wedge loose and throw bits <coughs> out the side there at us so there's a pin we got to push in and somehow we'll get lucky and be able to turn this ring right here. Uh, we don't have enough hands for this right now. 